Sakshi Singh Litoria joining you on the broadcast now. We have former ISRO chairman uh, Madhavan Nair joining us on the broadcast as well. Good morning to you, sir. We have just understood uh, that something has gone wrong there. We are still waiting for another date to be announced by ISRO for the test vehicle launch. Could you give us more details about if something of this sort has happened in the past? Uh, well, I think uh, what I could gather is that uh, the autonomous checkout system uh, has detected some anomaly uh, on the final firing of the rocket engine, and uh, that has put the old mission on the hold. Uh, that means it has not released the rocket uh, from the launch pad. Uh, so this is a normal uh, procedure because uh, before liftoff, we have to ensure the rockets are behaving all right, all the instruments are working all right, the computer, onboard computer software, everything. So this validation has to take place uh, until T0. And, uh, of course, uh, this, uh, uh, it's good that uh, it has been held up. Otherwise, uh, it would have ended up in submission failure. Uh, similar problem we have observed in the past. Uh, the major one which I can recall is one of the PSLU launches. Uh, at a similar hold was there and found out that one of the strap-on uh, motors uh, was not uh, building up the sufficient uh, uh, thrust uh, and then the launch was aborted. And then the replacement of the, the uh, rocket engine uh, was required and it took almost a month before we could uh, recover and come back to the next launch successfully. Uh, there's an, a, another incident, the GSLV was uh, a gas leak which was observed in the cryogenic stage and uh, again the hold was uh, initiated. Uh, of course the gas leak was later uh, spotted on the ground system uh, which could be corrected overnight and next day itself they were able to make the launch. So it all depends on uh, what is the kind of uh, anomaly what they have observed and uh, then uh, the troubleshooting and subsequent corrective action. I'm sure it's so okay will be able to set right soon and get back on rails. Right. Madhavanji, I want to understand from you how crucial is the entertainment prospect in this entire mission as far as the launch of the test vehicle is concerned. Because this is one of the factors that has been mentioned by ISRO chief that the weather conditions were not favourable. Could, uh, could you help us understand that factor as well? Uh, certainly. I think uh, before every launch uh, we had to ensure that the uh, weather conditions are normal, especially in this mission, the recovery sequence is involved. The visibility over the region where it is going to touch down is uh, very, very important. I understand there was some low pressure area in the uh, Bay of Bengal, and that is creating uh, weather disturbance. And normally this month is uh, October, November period, is uh, really notorious uh, for the weather uh, 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 bad weather in the Shirikota rain. So uh, when the, the weather conditions are not favorable, we had to uh, postpone the launch. Uh, I think this, this happens quite often, not only with us, even uh, I have witnessed uh, some launches uh, at Cape Kennedy. Uh, everything was ready and then suddenly a burst of cloud comes over and uh, that's it. We had to hold the launch and then uh, reschedule for the next day and so on. And moreover, you know, if there are uh, uh, cloud formation with charge, the discharge from the cloud, uh, the lightning, can affect the uh, launch vehicle and emission sequence and so on. In this particular mission, the visibility was very important for the recovery operations, hmm. for picking up the module from the sea. Right, Madhavanji. We also want to understand from you, usually how long does it take for a test vehicle to be retested as far as the launch is considered? Uh, well, I, I, as far as this test vehicle is concerned, uh, this uh, is a proven engine which is being used for this purpose. Uh, it is uh, the engine which has been right from PSLV and GSLV which has been working. So there may not be any doubt on the engine. So one has to look at what exactly has uh, gone wrong. And uh, I don't have a precise information, neither uh, the so team will have at this moment. But they have to wait through the uh, huge volume of data which is picked up by the uh, autonomous checkout system and then uh, decipher uh, what exactly has gone wrong. 
Right, Madhavanji. Also, we are not only looking at one such test happening, we are looking at 20 uh, or more than 20 such tests happening uh, in the coming future as far as the launch of Mission Gaganyas is concerned. How do you think this first test being delayed for the further date is going to affect the rest of the tests as well? Uh, well I don't think uh, there will be any major delay on account of this. Because we are not uh, gone into that, uh, what you call the uh, testing of the crew module and the ejection recovery operation, etc. So that is it to take place. So it is only the booster stage, uh, the rocket, which is, uh, is a, perhaps a new rocket, uh, so to say, uh, which is being uh, tested out for the first time. And uh, perhaps uh, uh, there could be some glitches when we start to attempt to do this. There will be uh, short delays, not a major one, I suppose. Right. Madhavan Nayarji, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18 and in fact making our viewers understand this entire delay in a better manner. We still have uh, Shrishti Chaudhary uh, staying live with us on the broadcast. Shrishti, coming back to you, we want to understand just for our viewers, could you lay out entire points in the series of events that's occurred today and the uh, things that have been mentioned by ISRO chief as far as this delay is concerned? Right. Uh, so, uh, the Indian Space Research Organization was supposed to carry out the test vehicle flight of Gaganyaan. This is the first test vehicle flight of the uh, uh, human space flight program that India has announced for launch in late 2025. Now, here uh, was uh, what we uh, must understand that this the test was conducted was uh, uh, the plan. It was planned to basically test the performance of the crew escape system so that you know uh, in case any emergency happens during the ascent phase the astronauts uh, you know uh, are safely uh, uh, recovered there so uh, what happened here is that uh, isro had announced that they would uh, plan the launch between 7 am to 9 am now this was the launch window considering the weather conditions are favorable uh, and then they had narrowed down to a time of about 8 am but it did not happen because the weather conditions were, were not suitable and uh, then it was again rescheduled to 8:45 am but again uh, everything was going as per the plan just but just 5 seconds into the launch, the uh, uh, the countdown had stopped because the engine did not ignite as expected. Uh, now, this uh, so these are series of commands which are given to a rocket just before the launch, which is called the automatic uh, uh, launch sequence. Okay, so uh, uh, this is beyond the control of the scientists there. But when that engine ignition did not happen, that uh, that is the time that ISRO decided to put the entire mission on hold. And ISRO chairman had said that they'll come back again with a new date when the mission would be allowed, uh, would be uh, you know uh, carried out. Now, uh, like uh, a former ISRO chairman, Mr. Nair has also said that visibility is a very important factor. The weather conditions also have to be favorable because this test flight is being conducted uh, uh, in in you know basically the rocket will be into the earth's atmosphere at about 17 kilometers and the q module is going to splash down so the atmospheric conditions as well as the conditions of the sea where the q module is going to splash down so all those conditions also have to be taken into consideration uh, uh, it may take some time for isro to figure out what was the anomaly and then fix it and then get uh, back to the launch pad for PVD-1. Uh, it may take some time. And uh, like Mr. Naya was saying, that it could take a month as well. So we do not know. We will have to wait for the next update from uh, ISRO chairman to uh, know when the TBD one would be uh, rescheduled. Right, Shishi, but one would uh, ask that, you know, when you are uh, aiming at launching some sort of a space mission, you always check the weather beforehand. So, were the weather conditions unfavorable since morning or, you know, past few days? So, uh, see, we need to understand that I'm, I'm, uh, I mean, uh, ISRO, uh, any time it is taking a rocket to the launch pad, it takes all these considerations. It checks the weather, it ensures that everything is in place, uh, but uh, weather can change any moment. So uh, maybe they had planned that during this process, if the conditions would be favorable, uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's a constantly changing process uh, in, in a long-term process. I would not be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I, I really can't divulge more on that, but uh, uh, let's say what ISRA has, uh, you know, uh, had thought out and uh, how it worked out, they, they'll definitely figure it out. Yeah.